Let's take Scrapy to the cloud. Today we are going to learn how to deploy Scrapy projects to the cloud. And the cloud that we are going to use is the Scrapy cloud. If we search Google for Scrapy cloud, this will be the first result that you get. And Scrapy cloud is created by the same company who actually created Scrapy. And if you want to use proxies in the future from the same company, everything is very nicely integrated, right? That is the benefit. Now let's see how it is done. First of all, you come to the site and you have to create a free account. It's very simple. Create a free account. I already have an account created. Once you log into your free account, this is how the interface is going to look like. And you will see here at the bottom to start a new project. You will have to click here, start a new project. And of course, the assumption is that you already have a scrappy project ready to be deployed to the cloud. This is where you give project name. And what's important here is that this project name is only for cloud. It's not related to whatever you have in your local machine. Now let's click start and let's wait for this project to be created. Now we have a message here that your project was created successfully. And you will see this screen where you have instructions about how to set up your project. What we have to do is essentially install this package. This is S hub, scrapy hub or shub. However you want to pronounce, I like to call it Shub. Once you install Shub, you will have to do a login. And after login, it will ask for your API key, give your API key and then run these commands. Summary, let's do it. Now in case you want to know how the project looks like, uh, this is it. It's a very simple spider. It is going to scrape all the thousand books, only the price and titles. Now let's install Shub. The command is very simple, pip install Shub. The next command is a shub login. You might see this warning depending on the version you are using. If you get this warning, you can ignore it. Now, this is the API key. We need that. It is validated and then it's logged in. This is the project ID. Just copy this and shub deploy. And there we go. And it is done. You might see one more warning related to message pack dash Python library. I never had a problem and I never bothered to resolve this, but you can if you want to. What's important is that you get this message status. OK, this is the project ID and so on and run your spiders at this URL. If you want to run the spiders now, you can just click this URL. It will open the same page and you will directly jump to the jobs dashboard. What is a job? Job is a specific instance of a run. For example, if I just click this run button and if I specify all the details and say run now, it will create a job. And this is what you will see in the next panel immediately. It will go into next and it will wait. Once that job starts running, it will jump here. Then once it is completed, it will jump here. And finally, once you select the job and delete it, that means you don't want to keep the items, history, logs and everything. Then it will go to delete it, which is like a trash or recycle bins. Basically, it will be deleted permanently after this from this. Now, you, what you need to remember is the free plan has certain limits and it will not allow you to keep too many completed jobs here. Let's see how we run it. So just click on this run button, a big purple run button, and you will see this dialog box here. And here you see the spider name. This is books underscore demo. Why does books underscore demo? Because in my spider, this was the name that I selected. What is job unit? Think of units like virtual machines. You can have one spider which is running from let's say five machines. You will have to allocate five units to this. Free plan has only one. That's where my options are limited. Now priority is when you have multiple spiders and you want to prioritize one over the another. Tags is only for the dashboard. It's not going to affect the results. And arguments is like command line arguments, dash A, and then the argument name, argument value. I'll simply click run now. Now, as you can see that it did not wait here in the next bucket because it was immediately started. You can see that there are 13 log items. There are 30 items. Now I can click here. And once I click here, I can see all those 1000 items that were scraped. Should I end the video? No, let me give you some more details. What you can do is you can export this data as CSV, JSON, JSON lines or XML. These are the four formats. Then you can see what exact pages were requested, how much time it took and all those details, right? For example, this request for us for robots.txt. This one was for this page. The status was 200, then log. 
what you need to remember is by default scrapey log when you run from the terminal it is set to debug you see lot more details but here that's only info don't worry we can change it and the final summary that you see that is the stats and that's what you can see here and this finish reason is finished that means it completed normally now let's talk about specific things number one what if you want to make certain changes to the spider and then you want to upload it again that's very simple for example let's make this t small and p small simple change now what if i want to upload it let's go to the terminal and remember this is the same terminal where we have already ran shub deploy this time i don't have to specify the project id i can simply say shub deploy and it is going to run if you see here you will see that there are a lot of new folders and the most important one is this yaml file scraping hub.yaml and this is where project id is stored now let's see a few more things on the left hand side there are interesting sections i think these will be very useful to understand the first section is related to the jobs we already had a look at the jobs dashboard that is the direct link here now the other links are related to now this section is related to spiders there is a dashboard for spider as well let's see that this is the only spider in this project if we have more than one then it will be available here then the if you deploy the code multiple times then you will see all the history here i've already de deployed this code three times you will see all the history here this is all related to code and deploy and of course you can connect your github account as well then settings which are related to the spiders will be here those are the settings that you can have here and these settings you can write it like settings equals value just like that you can do here and note that this white space character is important you will see here that the standard settings are available here but you are not limited to this if you have some additional settings which are not listed here you can go to raw settings for example let's start with log level and i'm going to change this log level to debug i want everything to be logged i'm going to click on save and i will rerun the spider and show it to you how do i rerun i have to go to jobs dashboard i go to jobs dashboard then i have to go back to this run button so let's click run and as you can see that this spider has already started running and the log items are already huge if i click it now we can see that there are debug messages as well now zeit actually has few more interesting tools for example this one the smart proxy manager this is their proxy solution and if you want me to create a separate video on this do let me know in the comments or that's all for now i'll see you in the next one